Hi, it's Mary Ellen with IT in Canada, and I'm here today at the first annual Smart Cities Summit, speaking with John Jung, who is the chairman and co-founder of the Intelligent Community Forum and president of the ICFF. John, thanks for taking the time to speak with me. Well, good morning, Mary. Happy to be here. Thanks. John, you've identified 12 actions that cities can take to future-proof themselves for success in the global economy. Could you identify the top three and explain why they are important to citizens and local business? Sure. I mean, all 12 are important and they are layered, but uh, we recognize that it has to be more than about infrastructure. And uh, the kind of smart community, intelligent community infrastructure uh, that's most important as part of that is high-speed broadband and the uh, IT that in, is enabling certain kinds of activities to occur over the uh, high-speed broadband. Um, the others uh, include things like making sure that uh, we are able to attract, create, and uh, more importantly, uh, retain the kind of knowledge workers that are important. Who then would use uh, this high-speed broadband to create, and I'll use the third one, uh, create innovative and um, uh, uh, opportunities that uh, then could be commercialized could be the, uh, the opportunities to export uh, internationally and so forth. Uh, so you've got infrastructure that's used by talented people. Uh, you want to keep those people in your community, so you have to do all sorts of things to be able to do that. Um, and as part of the 12 criteria that I talk about today, things like having a great, wonderful city or community that is well designed and, and uh, attractive, but you also have to have good governance, you have to have all these other kinds of uh, uh, attributes in a city that will keep that talent there. And then when, what does that talent do? Well, it creates, it's entrepreneurial, uh, it's collaborative, it uh, tries to create diversity, it tries to uh, ensure the future sustainability of the community. And so these all are layered one on top of each other and are important, but uh, the top three that I would say are great infrastructure, uh, great talent, and you want to keep that talent, and uh, also then uh, do it and use it in a way that creates uh, sustainable uh, jobs and the economy for the region through uh, innovation and uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, John. You've given a very good description of what makes a city intelligent. What should politicians, citizens, and business leaders do to contribute to the creation of this type, type of city? Well, what you're describing is what is referred to as a triple helix. Um, the public, private and the institutional sectors all have to work together in sync. Uh, the cities that uh, cities and regions that do this uh, are looking to create a balance because obviously uh, jobs that used to be there have now been destroyed because of uh, uh, the kinds of new technology that are in place uh, and those jobs just won't come back. There are new jobs in play and so everybody has to work together and some of them uh, need to be properly funded. Uh, what we're looking for is uh, an opportunity for uh, the governance to create the environment uh, that uh, nurtures uh, creativity and innovation, that nurtures the attraction of, uh, of talent, in some cases the creation of talent by attracting a university or, or higher level of learning into a community. Uh, businesses need to thrive, they will need to bring in other foreign direct investment into a community, uh, they need to participate by being collaborative, uh, by being entrepreneurial, and by creating the kind of opportunities for those who are talented to have jobs in the community. And finally, uh, the institutions themselves, they need to be there to create the talent, uh, to create the passion, and, uh, the, the, and inspire those creative uh, juices in those communities to actually do unique things that then help to um, uh, create opportunities for those communities to thrive in a, in a wonderful economy. So those are the kinds of things that happen and, and are uh, very keen to uh, see that occur in uh, communities all around the world. Mm -hmm. I understand that Toronto is a contender this year for the Intelligent Communities Forum Award. What are Toronto's assets in this competition and what could the city be doing better? So I'm, I'm very familiar with uh, the, the Toronto and Toronto area. Uh, one of the key things that uh, differentiates Toronto from many other uh, Canadian cities uh, is its attributes along its waterfront. 
there are many other cities that have beautiful mountains, uh, ocean settings, uh, uh, hills and so forth. Toronto is uh, a community on its waterfront and the Toronto waterfront is being redeveloped in, the, in terms of what they call the intelligent waterfront. Uh, they've been able to attract uh, a very affordable, uh, high speed, in fact gigabyte environment which uh, will attract foreign direct investment will, and has attracted uh, sustainable businesses, has uh, attracted uh, the development of uh, institutions that are supporting uh, this intelligent waterfront environment. Um, we know the Pan Am Games are coming, there will be housing, there will be people that will actually use and live it all year round. Um, but the Toronto waterfront uh, differentiates itself not just in terms of that infrastructure but because of its overall philosophy of sustainability. It has a transit first uh, attitude. It uh, develops affordable gigabyte uh, high-speed broadband for all these businesses. It has a, a, a use and reuse uh, application uh, that all these policies will of course penetrate the rest of the community and so it is a passionate, inspiring uh, waterfront that I think will be uh, 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 very well received all around the world as it evolves. I'm very proud of the fact that uh, uh, this community is evolving in that direction. Mm -hmm. and my last question, John, is about the IFC awards. I noticed that there's a disproportionate share of Canadian cities among the award winners. When you take into account our population and the number of cities we have, how do you account for this, especially given the high cost of broadband in our country? Sure. So, uh, at the end of the day, it's about getting the word out. Uh, we've been doing this for decades, actually, and uh, there are a significant number of Asian, European, uh, South American, even African uh, and Australian uh, communities that have participated. Uh, but we have a headquarters in New York City. Uh, we have a number of people that uh, travel all over the world, but you know it's, it's easiest to market in uh, locations like Canada and the United States. Not that we're North American centric, we don't want to be, we spend a lot of time in India and China and elsewhere, uh, but uh, what we're looking really for is the opportunity uh, to uh, go beyond just Canada and the United States. However, Canadian cities get it. Uh, they understand what it takes to become an intelligent uh, community, a smart city, and it's very well advertised, it's viral, uh, people uh, throughout Canada are working towards becoming these intelligent and smart communities and they know how to take advantage of a free application. <laughs> uh, it doesn't cost anything to apply. Uh, many of these cities, in fact all of these cities have never put a penny into any of these awards processes. Uh, ICF does this to inspire other communities around the world to become better communities. This is sort of like a, a Doctors Without Borders. We're economists, we're educators, we're uh, urban planners, uh, we're journalists, we're people who volunteer to make this happen. And uh, we spend a lot of time in North America because a lot of us live here and spread the word and that's how virally it gets out there. Canadians tend to apply more and um, uh, as a result we do have a disproportionate number who have uh, won over the, over the years. However, we have uh, put a huge uh, focus on trying to get uh, Indian cities, uh, Asian cities, uh, now we have a lot of Australian cities, and you'll see in South America it's evolving. Uh, we're spending a lot of time uh, trying to uh, promote these intelligent communities uh, in emerging countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Joan. We look forward to hearing about your shortlist tonight, and thank you so much for your insight. Thank you very much.